once again, my name Once again, my name is Asa Mack, the Associate Director for Student Involvement. And so my areas of insight, um, I am the direct advisor to the AUSG, um, AU Student Government, um, AU Club Council. Um, so what they do is they're uh, responsible for um, disseminating any type of uh, funds, the student fee money to student organizations who wish to uh, be a, uh, to program and do things um, in the AU community, um, student media, um, which is made up of around eight or nine media organizations, uh, ranging from, the, of course, the school newspaper, the Eagle, the Black Print, and other ones that allow students to explore their uh, creative uh, side through uh, any type of um, uh, any type of writing or journalism, pictures, things of that nature. Um, we'll also be talking a little bit about the student leadership. Um, past uh, development that we will be rolling out this year, um, as well as I also have Graduate Leadership Council. Um, and I supervise uh, two wonderful um, assistant directors um, who are responsible for club council and student media. Um, and they also split our graduate students as well. And I will turn it over to Sam. Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Easby, and I'm the Associate Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, just a quick highlight, high-level overview of kind of my areas of oversight. Um, we currently have 25 Greek letter organizations at AU's campus, so we provide support for all of those different groups, uh, whether it's recruitment, chapter operations, you name it, we kind of help them work through those processes. Um, and then we also work with our different pro, uh, councils. So each of these councils oversee kind of their body of um, different chapters and what they see. So we have the Interfraternity Council, the Intercultural Greek Council, and the Panhellenic Council. Um, and my team consists, there's two of us in the office, my wonderful program coordinator, and then we also have a grad student who helps us with all those operations as well. Oh, yes, I do have a grad, but I haven't found that person yet. A work in progress. Right. Um, I could take this one. Um, why is student involvement important? Well, first of all, it creates a sense of belonging. Um, it allows students to find their community and build community with other students who uh, may be like-minded or may not be. Um, it also allows them to develop their uh, inter intrapersonal skills, and so it helps them to communicate solve conflict, uh, some of the things that we are seeing as being a hindrance to some of our students is that they are um, struggling in that area, especially uh, as they've come back after COVID. Um, it does increase student satisfaction in, in regards to their being satisfied with their overall college experience, and it does lead to uh, the impact of student retention. Yeah, and the one thing that's really important about, we talk a lot about student involvement, which is great. The thing that we really want to get a student to the next phase of that is them being actually engaged on a college campus. So a student can go out and, you know, join 5 million different organizations just to have kind of that checkbox on their resume. But really, we are looking for our students to actively engage in these opportunities. Um, and we just put a definition here to kind of define what that engagement looks like. So really, we're looking at what the time and effort students devote to activities um, and what that does for a student. So when they actually devote time and interest and passion into something, they're going to actually do better in college. They're gonna do better academically. They're going to participate in all different types of activities. And they're also gonna participate more actively just in their college experience in general. Once again, we talk about the importance of student engagement, once again, retention, graduation rates, academic achievement, um, development of non-academic skills, so what I like to call those human skills um, and alumni giving. And so what we want to make sure we understand is that um, we're here because we also believe that retention um, and engagement uh, requires everyone. Um, it's not just our office, it's just not student affairs, but it takes a collective um, to impact retention um, and all of these things, actually. And so um, some of the things we also try to do is figure out what these students are majoring in and try to tailor the experience around that as well, um, because we want to make sure that these things are coming together as one 
um, as we develop the holistic person. And so this is a lot of the important things when we're talking about the importance of student engagement. Yeah, and the other piece of this, you know, obviously we want our students to be engaged, but we also want them to be engaged in a purposeful and meaningful way to themselves. And then also to make sure that they are really maintaining like a healthy lifestyle. We see a lot of unhealthy engagement, which we're going to touch on a little bit later. Um, but one thing we really want to highlight when we're talking about purposeful student involvement a lot of times our students really confuse that quantity versus quality piece. And I think a lot of that stems from the high school experience, right? You know, we're told in high school, our students are told in high school when to get into college, they have to be on every sports team, um, the debate team, have climbed Mount Everest by the time they're 18, whatever that looks like. And they have all these check boxes because that's what they're told to do to get into college. But when they come to college, that mindset is still there. It's like, I have to complete X number of internship hours to get a job. I have to do this. I have to do that. Whereas a lot of times what that ends up being is really just, I was a part of this organization, but I never actually went to a single meeting or didn't get anything out of that experience. So when they actually go at the end of this, they haven't learned anything from that opportunity. And they also can't speak about that in a job interview or anything in the future. Um, and also, it means they're, you know, stressed out. They have too many things going on, and that leads to less engagement. Um, so we really want our students to see opportunities they actually care about, things that they see themselves potentially um, being involved in for all four years. Um, and if not, that's okay because interests change. Or um, we also just want them to seek out things that they're actually going to invest their time and energy into. Um, and then also, you know, anything that they can learn is really helpful if they feel like they would like to be a part of an experience because they, you know, are lacking some of that skill set, that's also a really purposeful and meaningful experience for them because they're going to walk away with a brand new skill set. And hopefully, you know, new friends and uh, different opportunities will come from that as well. So well, as we, we talk about that and we talk about healthy and unhealthy engagement and uh, the student experience and making sure that they're getting the things that they need uh, as we get them through graduation is what I like to say is that um, healthy engagement for our students hopefully looks a lot like this. Um, we always try to connect with them, talk with them um, on what that looks like because because of that mindset that um, Sam talked about in terms of just having to check box everything, a lot of times they struggle with setting those clear boundaries at the beginning. And so we want to make sure that you know the healthy engagement is always they're setting clear boundaries. And so when they're in leadership and you know making sure that their schoolwork comes first, um, that they're not majoring in uh, their organization. Um, they're participating in no more than two to three organizations um, throughout any given school year. Um, I normally tell first year students probably don't go over two uh, as they're trying to adjust um, in, in regards to that. And of course, you know, making sure that they understand the type of organizations that they want to join. And, and that will a lot of times help them uh, grow. Um, a lot of times that'll help them stretch themselves because they may try to pick something that is outside of the scope of where they're comfortable. Uh, and, and that allows them to connect with other people. And so we always want to make sure that they're connecting with other people on campus through their interests and through their engagement, that they're discussing things with their faculty, being a part and being active uh, within their actual program, uh, their program of study in, in that way. And so you know, being able to see the correlation between the two. And, and this is a lot of what healthy engagement looks like, um, but we do have a lot of students, as I talked about a little bit, who don't practice healthy engagement. So some of the things, and I'm sure you've experienced maybe this in your roles, you see students all the time, maybe they're over-involved, they're joining 10 organizations, so then they're always in a meeting or different things. Um, and when they overextend themselves, that impacts their mental health, it also impacts them academically, and then it also impacts them socially as well. So we really want to make sure that our students are trying not to be over-involved. Um, they don't have a lack of, they have a lack of boundaries, so they don't, they're not able to say no to an opportunity. And I will say, I think that's probably one of the hardest things to learn, even as an adult, right? It's really hard to say no to different opportunities and different experiences, because it takes a lot of self-awareness to understand how 
you are feeling, how you are um, coping with the things that you need to handle academically and socially. Um, so it's really hard to be able to kind of set those clear boundaries and make sure that you are taking care of yourself first. Um, we also see a lot of poor time management. Um, and I think, you know, that leads that's something that I think every 18 to 22 year old struggles with. Um, I'm sure, I mean, honestly, I still struggle with it at times and it's really trying to understand how they can manage their time better. So if you're going to actually engage socially, make that a priority and that's great, but you also have to make time for the other important things that are going on in your life. And if you commit to something, then you need to make time for that um, experience as well, because otherwise you're just not going to get anything out of it. Um, you know, we really hope that they're choosing groups, you know, based on their interests and what they're excited about and their values. Um, and something else that we see that's something that's pretty unhealthy is serving on leadership in three or more organizations. That is really overextending our students. Um because they, it's really hard to be actively engaged as a leader of an organization. Even just being a leader of just one organization is a huge time commitment. So when we multiply that, that means that they're getting stretched it. Then some of those organizations aren't benefiting from their leadership. Um, and really what they're doing is all three of those groups will be suffering rather than really being having a positive impact on their own personal development, but also they're not having a positive impact on that organization. And so this is our, what we would call our cohorts. Um, this one is a rather, this one is a little older and we have to update because we just made some changes throughout the course of this year. Um, but I will touch on them right now is that um, once again, um, these are what we manage in our office directly. So there is a staff person that is directly assigned to these, these uh, cohorts. And so um, student government, of course, I already discussed um, the FSL as well. Um, as you see me, myself and Sam have each one of those, um, but we also have student media and club council, what we talked about. And we also have SAC, which is brand new um, in the fall. Um, it is our student activity council. And so what that is, is it is a council that now is um, going to have uh, direct student run oversight of our uh, programming boards. And so our programming boards, which is Kennedy Political Union, uh, Traditions and Spirits, uh, Spirits and Traditions, um, Students for Change, and SUB, which is our student union board. And so um, they are brand new. And so we're, um, at time of... Uh, presentation. Uh, we had not had the the other stuff as of yet, but um, we will talk about it in a later slide about, you know, how students can get involved in that, because um, we do have opportunities in regards to that. So we'll go a little depth, a little more in depth in those things. Yeah, so just to give a high level level overview of fraternity and sorority life, I know that there's so many different options on AU's campus, which is great. Fraternity and sorority life can be a really great opportunity for students to join. Um, studies show that when you join a fraternity or sorority, you have a better sense of community, a sense of belonging on a college campus. It also shows that students grow more in their leadership development. They have opportunities for mentorship, whether it's peer to peer or from alumni advisors or even from staff in the office, which is a great opportunity. Um, it, it's a just, it's a great, it can be a really positive experience for students. Um, but just to highlight, we do actually have some requirements for joining our organizations. Um, which I think is really helpful to be aware of just because, you know, in most of our other groups, you can come as a first year student and join right away and really get that positive experience. Um, however, for our first year students at AU, we actually require that all of our students have earned a minimum of 12 credit hours. So that means they really cannot go through the recruitment process until January. So they have a full semester to kind of come to AU's campus, get acclimated to campus, make friends outside of fraternity and sorority life, and see what other things interest them before they have the opportunity to join one of these organizations. Um, we also have a minimum GPA requirement. So we require that all of our, uh, all, everyone who goes through the recruitment process has a 2.5 out of the 4.0 scale. 
um, and is in good disciplinary standing. Um, and we have those requirements a lot of the time because most of our um, organizations, since they're private organizations, those are things that they already have as requirements. So we just kind of put that out there. So we make sure that students who are eligible to go through the process are students that are eligible to join these organizations as well, because they are affiliated with national organizations. Um, for transfer students, if you're working with transfer students, we do have informal recruitment in the fall and transfer students are eligible to join those organizations. So we have IFC and NPC um, informal recruitment in the fall, and then they do formal recruitment in the spring. For our IGC groups, they um, do their recruitment in a different way. Um, they do it follow an intake process, so they can either take members in the fall or the spring, that's up to them. Um, we do still require that um, all of those students who join those organizations have the minimum 12 credit hours. So for example, if one of the groups that they're interested in joining takes members in the fall, it's likely they won't take members till the next fall, um, but it just kind of depends. So if you have a student who's interested in joining an IGC organization, you can absolutely refer them to our office and we can connect them with the right people because um, there's not as a formalized process with those groups. Um, but realistically, you know, there's a lot of opportunities here. You can be chapter president, be on your chapter exec board. We also have council leadership who are the governing bodies of these organizations. And they do things like put on big programming events. They do, um, they run recruitment. So there's a lot of really positive opportunities for them to get engaged and to really gain really important life skills, planning events, risk management, um, conflict management, leading their peers. So there are really a lot of really great opportunities here. And so we also have AU club council. And so what our AU club council is consist of, uh, it consists of a chair, we, um, finance, um, marketing and then we have like club consultants um that literally are assigned to all of the clubs that are in uh with that are within um au and so rough right now we roughly have probably around 180 um active clubs and organizations here at au uh, with some that are have been frozen um because of lack of participation but they can always come back and so uh, really what au club council does is um they just they are allowed to they come together and they distribute um, each week they have an allocation meeting and so what student organizations can do there is submit budget requests um, if they want any type of programs and things of that nature um, and that allows them to you know come together work collaborative to collaboratively um, as as a unit to really um, put together uh, if they're going to say no to these budgets um, if they're going to say yes um, and so it helps them in a lot of areas in terms of once again working with their peers uh, solving any type of complex uh complex issues um but also um having to deal with conflict uh because sometimes students are upset when you they ask for five thousand dollars and they tell them we'll give you three um and so um it's a lot of times where we want to make sure that uh, they are getting the support that they need from us as well but the biggest thing is that we want to make sure that they are getting the skills that they need as they move forward it, it also gives you an opportunity to, to lead your peers um, all of the opportunities that we have will give them those skill sets that they're looking for. Um, and this is what is one of the things that they do. And so, um, once again, the requirements are probably going to be a, the same across the board for all of our cohorts and for a level of consistency. And then, of course, um, with the recruitment, that usually takes place in around um, April um, as we are looking for new uh, people to join the committee um, and, and join the council or be committee chair or be a uh, a club consultant or be the finance chair and things of that nature and so that op application process with like all our processes will take place on the engaged platform that we'll touch on a little bit later on uh, for you all as well um au student government um, gives you a lot of the same things um and so this is the advocacy arm of our student cohorts and what this allows for them to do is to work together to hear the, the the issues that their students may be dealing with, their peers may be dealing with, and then working with the administration to try to rectify um, if there's any type of policies that can uh, change or be added or, you know, work together. And sometimes they even work together with uh, other faculty and staff across the university if there's also some other things that um, can be brought together in terms of to enhance the student experience here at AU. 
and and so what we have um been doing um as of late has been doing a lot of restructuring with uh student government and working through those things um redoing their uh, governing documents um, and that has also helped them be able to you know learn to write a little better be clear and concise with their writing and things of that nature once again um solving any conflict because you know when you get that many people who think how an organization could go um, a lot of people will have some thoughts about how an organization should be moving and how they should move forward and so um, that has been a great time for them uh, to learn these things and once again uh, the elections uh, usually take place for senate and first year students in the in the fall um, the executive board will take place in the spring our executive board is just made up of the president vice president senate uh, secretary and, and comptroller or treasurer our vice president um, also uh, serves as the speaker of the senate um, that has been a new change and so um, a lot of things that they'll do they'll do town halls and, and things of that nature uh, but you know when we're talking about au student government uh, we do that as well we try to make sure that they're doing the things that they need to do um, to be able to serve our students and it allows them to also connect with their students in, in, in more intimate ways. This is the Student Activity Council, um, which is what I talked about earlier. Uh, student ran um, as this is programming. Um, they're literally responsible for programming um, at different levels and so some of them bring in speakers and that's really more or less what they do kennedy political union usually bring in speakers that are more politically charged um sub or student union board is more focused on fun things concerts comedy shows things of that nature uh students for change is kind of a they bring speakers but it kind of goes across kind of all disciplines that are not political but it can touch on some political and spirit and traditions which is something new um, to try to figure out you know what what our students really think is our traditions um are we going to bring back some old ones or are we going to create new ones and to try to institute some type of spirit um within the au student community and so um, once again that most of our anytime anytime I, we have any type of application process um, these things will usually happen late February, mid-March, um, as we usually want to make sure that all of our leadership um, is selected around about April. Um, so if there's anything that we want to do with them as we move forward um, before the end of the school year, we can uh, come together, help them work on and start transitioning and, and planning for the year ahead um, to have a good summer. And so these are the things that we try to do. These are opportunities for our students or for the students that uh, you all come in contact with. Um, also like to touch on when we talk about student government, um, we have the e-board, we have the Senate, and we also have, uh, they also have representation with each school. And so each school has a council that is under student government that where their presidents talk to me directly, um, a lot of times, um, and the vice president. And so, you know, those things we kind of just, have to ensure that um, we are in a space to do those type of things. And so we wanna make sure that that is happening in a way for our students. And so you can go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, so right now we're working on this really great opportunity for leadership development and ASA has really been spearing the, you know, really been the head of the charge for this. So feel free to jump in ASA if you have anything else to add after this or after I have give a quick synopsis of this. So currently we are trying to develop kind of a leadership development plan where students will have the opportunity to develop those more human skills and really make sure that they are developing as leaders and ensuring that they can, you know, move forward after they leave AU's campus um, in a place where they can be leaders in the workplace, um, in advocate groups, whatever they decide to do after graduation. Um, and what we're really focusing on is self-awareness, critical thinking, cultural competency, communication, and then overall personal wellness. Because um, we know that right now, personal wellness is really important with uh, college age students. We are seeing a lot of a big rise in mental health concerns with this age group. So we wanna make sure that all of our students are developing important skills, but they're doing it in a healthy way. 
Um, so the idea of this is that it would be a, curric a multi-phased curriculum. You would go through in a different phase and learn different um, components of each of these areas of focus. So you would start off one semester kind of as a beginner and then move through until you almost became quote unquote an expert in some of these oper different um, areas. Um, so it would be Ultimately, the vision is that it will be a multi-semester initiative. Right now, we're currently in the beginning phase, so we are starting the semester with kind of a cohort model um, to see what we can, to see that and make sure that we can really provide a quality experience for our students and get all the kinks out before we kind of roll out this multi-phase approach. Um, Asa, do you have anything you want to add there? Yeah, I mean, pretty much um, all of that stuff um, is true and and really what it boils down to is that uh, uh, my when I arrived a couple years ago I started to kind of notice the, the deficiencies that students were having within um, coming out of COVID in a lot of these areas but also um, my goal has always been to help students become the best versions of themselves and so this is uh, one of those opportunities that we uh, wanted to develop uh, to help students do that, right? That they can understand, they can have the skills to design their own life, uh, pursue their dreams and things of that nature um, and, and recognize what their purpose is. And so uh, we have a number of things that we really want to do, that, of course, down the line and, and, and really expand it throughout the Division of Student Affairs. Um, I think I saw Raymond in here, so hint, hint on that. Um, and so, um, but this is something that we want to be able to do throughout the division um, in time and and so that it's is really a, a collective thing and hopefully being able to also collaborate um, with uh, academic units as well, because I know some academic units have these type of leadership things and so being able to kind of pull all of the great minds together within the faculty, staff and students to develop something where these students are getting the skills that they need so that they can move forward. Um, and that's the long term goal, but as Sam stated, we're going to just start with the cohorts that we kind of talked about right now and some of our student organization leaders um, to bring in a cohort about 60 where they have the opportunity to really develop this thing. Um, and so uh, we're going to spend the semester doing that and then we'll take the proper assessment um, to do those things um, and we will move from there, but that's you know what we really do as an office um, and we're trying to. This is something that we really want to um, push forward in, in time. Um, and we have, you know, learning outcomes and, and things of that nature that have been that have been written and we'll refocus on those um, as time goes on, as we meet with our students and see what it's going to be. Um, but this is definitely something that uh, we want to do um, and make sure that it is a collaborative effort with everyone. So how can you all help? Um, I'll start. You all can become an advisor. That'd be great. Um, and so um, student orgs are always looking for advisors because we just do not have the bandwidth to uh, organize them all um, and to advise them all. Um, I tell you, student government gives me all the all the time I need. Um, and so, um, but I'm always willing to help and, and also to be an active advisor. Um, I'll, and, and, and I think that's the biggest piece in that. And a lot of times we have a lot of advisors that, you know, have just been advisors on paper. Um, and we will talk to the students and they'll be like, they, they haven't talked to their advisor at all. And so um, once we get this leadership development stuff underway, there is some things that I've been thinking about on, on how to engage advisors more, uh, because I know it is something volunteer. Um, but it really is a everybody process um, in order to really truly support these organizations and these students and what they're trying to do. And so we want to make sure that we are doing a better job of engaging you all um, as potential advisors and current advisors um, to understanding um, those those things. So I will I will yield a little bit to Sam for some of the other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the other key components to really what we could use your help with and use your support with is really understanding. And, you know, we just gave an overview of what our office does and what our and it's really helpful when we know that students can ask anyone on campus and then they can refer them to our office. So we have a whole 
plethora of opportunities for our students to get involved. And it's really helpful when you can say, oh, like you want to join a fraternity and sorority, that's great. You can come to the Center for Student Involvement and they will help you with that opportunity. Because that is really what we see our office as. We see that our office as a bridge for students to find something they're interested, to find something they're passionate about, and to really make the most out of that experience. But a lot of times students just don't even make it to our office, right? So we really want to make sure that students know what we do, how we can help them, and also to, you know, just let them know that we're not a scary group of people. We are going to come and help them, and that's totally, and they're going to have a great experience the moment they walk in our office door. Um, also, just being more aware of um, our policies and procedures, um, we have a lot of, there's a lot of miscommunication in the student body about what we do, what we approve, what we don't approve. A lot of that revolves around events or money or distribution, things like that. And it's really helpful for us to, for everyone to be aware just around some of our different policies and procedures around things like events. So if we don't approve an event for a student group, it's always because they didn't follow the, proce follow the procedure. It's not because we're out to get certain groups. It's not but we do want to make sure that we're holding our students to the expectations that we set, because that's what they're, you know, that's what we're trying to teach them to. We're trying to, to teach them how to be adults and how to have job skills and all these things. And when they follow everything through, we're going to bend over backwards to help them get that opportunity, but it, only if they actually go through the proper pr protocols and procedures. So that's a really helpful thing. And all of our policies are on our website. So students have access to them. You have access to them. There's, you can look through if a student comes to you for different things, or you can ask one of us. We are always open to ask, answering any questions that you all have. Um, so that's really helpful. And then providing that support to students, helping them understand if we say no, why do they, why did we say no, right? So we can really make sure that they're learning from that experience or that failure and then can move forward and do everything correctly and make sure that they're going to have a positive experience. So just really having that understanding of our office policies and understanding what resources are available on campus is helpful. And, and I would just add with the policy piece, um, you know, because we do, there there are a lot of times where students may be once again working with different schools um, on different large events. And, and though we have no issues with that, a lot of times it's that, like Sam said, it is that, that breakdown in communication and understanding, but also the student will just go tell them what was said, what, what, what they will say, we said no. They won't say why they, we said no. They'll just say we said no. Um, and so then it turns into this big thing of even, um, you know, our peers as, as faculty and staff think that we're just out here being a roadblock for students. And usually what has happened is they didn't turn in some paperwork or they know we told them that you can't use student fee money to do this or you can't do use student, student fee money to do that. Um, there's always a rhyme or reason for why we say no. Uh, we don't try to say no because uh, what I always try to tell students is that actually saying no means more work for me because now I have to tell you how to get the yes, which means you have to now come back. And then when you come back to get the yes, and then it's more work. So I would love to make sure that I can just say yes from the beginning, and then we can just do the work once. And so I like to work smarter, not harder. We all like to. And so um, we are trying to make sure that we're doing a lot of things on the front end um, with our trainings and creating a, 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 a student handbook for students and things of that nature um, to ensure that they understand what it is that we do in our policies and procedures around programming. That way, um, we hopefully can negate some of this stuff. But we also understand that we just gonna have to deal with it um, wherever it comes and we're always gonna make sure that we are supporting our students the best way we can. So if you wanna connect with us, uh, we are in MGC 271. Um, here are all of the ways that you can, this is our emails, but also if you wanna email myself, um, it's AMAC at American. If you wanna be a part of the process, you wanna help, uh, you wanna ask more questions, I have no problem with that. Um, and, and we can help. And once again, this is just something, um, the Cork app 
um, which is part of our Engage platform and where it allows for students to engage with the campus community, know what what uh, programs are going on, it lists the type of organizations that they are a part of. Um, this is where they usually apply for many different things. Uh, this is everything. They, this is where they sign in for programs at and things of that nature. And so um, we have some welcome week programs that are coming up um, from starting August 21st. You all are more than welcome to come out. We'll be outside. Um, the involvement fair is August 31st, um, where all our student organizations um, will be out on the quad. That's from 11 to 2. So, you know, you. Um, we, we hope that if there's any faculty in here, none of your students are missing class for this. But it is happening from 11 to uh, 11 to 2. Um, it gives everybody an opportunity to see the organizations that are on campus and opportunities to join. Um, and once again, if you all need anything, please let us know. Uh, this is the Engage platform. This is what this would look like. Um, and so uh, what I kind of talk about is this is where everything is li uh, live for them. And um, I think that is, yes. And so if you all have any questions, uh, we will yield for a little bit of time because I know the next one starts soon. Also, I can sit in the awkward silence. Asa and Sam, it's uh, Raymond. Really great job. Um, I love how you've emphasized the student leadership part about reflection. I um, mean, developing those skills. And um, thank you also for explaining how we say no to students. And it's never a one dimensional answer. Uh, I think um, our students, not unlike us, frankly, in this now culture, we wanted yesterday, right? So I love how you've coached us on uh, how to guide students so that we're um, on the same page. So um, this is terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Hi, Asa, and hi, Sam. I just wanted to add something. Um, I really appreciate you guys really talking through all of this because I um, know in my own work um, in uh, supporting student media that there is a lot of um, not always a full understanding of, of what the processes are and um, a full understanding of what your office does. Um, so I always appreciate learning more about the the why and the machinations of of how things work in your office so that I can better inform student media when I get um, you know requests from them. So I, I always appreciate all of this knowledge. Um, and and I, I hear you when 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 you say that there isn't always the right information out there about the work that you guys do, but I appreciate it wholeheartedly. And I look forward to probably speaking with both of you <laughs> throughout the school year uh, and further. So thank you. We appreciate you too, Jasmine. Thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> My name is Behza Jalali. I, uh, I'm a director of uh, university quantitative support. And I very much actually like to be involved with, with you and, and be, you know, advising students, you know, because, you know, I do run uh, tutoring labs. I run, you know, undergraduate, graduate students, you know, anything to do with quantitative support that we provide. And it engages a lot of students, you know, actually everybody has to take a Q1, Q2 course in the university and, and they visit us. So I like to be more involved with the students any which way because you have expertise in these things and I don't. So I would like to uh, just, we can, my name is Beza Jalali is in, is in the database. You can contact me or we want me to see you any which way that, uh, you know, a reasonable time you spend, <laughs> I will definitely do that. So please uh, let me know. Thanks for the for the beautiful presentation. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. For those in the chat that want to be a part of it, yeah, definitely shoot me an email. Um, the more people that can look at this, the better. Because uh, honestly, I I'm tired of looking at it <laughs> myself. Um, <laughs> it is. It has definitely been a, a, a undertaking, but um, I am definitely willing to. Uh, um, I, I I believe teamwork made the dream work. So um, anyone who wants to help, um, I am always willing to uh, extend that helping that hand, accept that hand. So 
you know, I was a student at AU and I actually did run a club myself. I initiated the club and we, we ran it and we had actually a wonderful time and wonderful memories of that. But that goes back like in the late seventies, early eighties. So you guys, most of you were not born. So, but anyway, it was a wonderful experience. And then you know, we engaged with other clubs, you know, we had, we had a cultural club and we, we did so many different events and we invited the speakers. We had, we had New Year parties and, and Christmas parties and so on. So, so I, I have wonderful experience and memories of, of all that. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, students, you know, I think when coming back from COVID, um, we had students that had never seen school in a normal space. And, and so I think they tried to hold on to kind of what they heard. And a lot of times I tried to push them to, why don't you create something new, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's not, you're holding on to something that you heard about. So you didn't witness it. So it's, it is what it is at this point. And so um, you can define what your experience is. So um, let's, let's figure that out. And so once again, um, anytime we're looking, um, we do uh, new club re uh, registration every year. So usually there are clubs um, that are looking for um, advisors. And I know there, there are probably some faculty that are definitely love faculty and other staff that would love the extra hands um, because they're sometimes we see a lot of the same names um, and so we know it's to that point where um, we need to you know be able to get out and engage um, faculty and staff a lot more um, and how they can uh, support students in, in various other ways um, like being a student org advisor um, it's not something that you have to sit and do every day um, but it definitely um, is something that, you know, they need that support in, in other aspects. Because so sometimes they have like, you know, conflicts and things of that nature within the organization. Mm -hmm. And though we help them, a lot of the times when we're reaching out to the faculty, that's usually the first time they've actually heard if anything happening. Um, and so now they've kind of come in in this certain space and, and they're trying to help. And sometimes we've also seen it kind of backfire. And so... Um, the more active that the advisor can be on the front end, a lot easier it is, um, but we do get, um, there are some great advisors and we're not taking away from those great advisors because there are some great ones um, and, and they do a wonderful job. And so, um, but we, you know, we want to just make sure it's definitely more consistent across the board because our students really, as they continue to create new uh, organizations and things of that nature, um, because we do new club registration every every semester and so each year we're probably bringing on another 30 or so organizations so um, yeah but i think that was it um thank you all for this time uh, once again you know you all can reach out to any one of us um, and we will love to continue the collaboration thank you thank you Thanks, everyone. What was it like the same week?